Okay, my fellow merfolk, today we're going to be talking about how to be environmentally friendly when you're out swimming in the lake or the ocean or streams, rivers, wherever it is that you swim. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. I lost the top to my lapel mic, so now I have a clumped up piece of dog fur as a windbreaker, and it works. So that's what that is. That is dog fur taped to my mic because sometimes the redneck solution is the best solution. And plus, it's eco-friendly. In this video, I'm going to be giving you seven different tips on how to be environmentally friendly as a mermaid or a merman or any sort of person who likes to swim in the water or just enjoy nature in general. So hopefully this video will have a little bit of something for everybody. I'm gonna just bust right through because it's freezing out here, it's fall and I'm cold. So let's get started. My first tip that I have for you is to use reef friendly sunscreen because there are certain compounds and chemicals in certain brand name sunscreens that when they get into the ocean they can actually harm the coral reefs and end up killing the coral reefs now believe it or not this guy here which somebody gave to me i didn't buy it you should never buy coral this is a real piece of coral coral is actually an animal it is not a plant, it is not a rock, it is an animal. And just like sloths have little tiny bugs and moss and whatever growing on their backs, and they are very important to their habitat for those little critters, coral reefs are important to a wide range of different fish and aquatic life. They are animals, but they are animals that are very, very important, and they allow people to go see all the beautiful things you would see on a scuba diving adventure. So get some reef-friendly sunscreen. If you're going to wear sunscreen, I will link some down below. Experiment and find out which one works best for you. Personally, I just don't wear sunscreen because I'm really bad about that, and I usually swim in the evening. And if you're like me and you don't like sunscreen, you can also wear hats and long sleeve clothing because that will help keep the sun off of you too. The second way you can help keep our oceans, lakes, and rivers clean when you go to the beach to swim or lounge or whatever it is you do there is a given one. Pick up after yourself and pick up after others. If you have something that you take with you to the beach, make sure that it comes back with you or goes in the trash can or recycle bin or wherever it is that it needs to go. And if you happen to see some things that other people leave laying around on the beach, pick it up. Or if you notice that somebody left something there and they're still there, say, hey, I noticed you forgot that over there. And if nobody's around, you can always, if you have gloves, pick stuff up with your hands. If you don't have gloves and something is slightly sketchy looking, I like to take sticks because sticks are usually found everywhere. I like to take sticks or leaves, leaves kind of to use an, a, as an alternative to bags since they're pretty thick, or sticks, you can kind of shove them on things or use them as chopsticks and pick stuff up and put it in the trash can safely. I have a bunch of videos titled Good Clean Fun on my Instagram stories, so you can go watch that if you want some inspiration for how to clean up and have fun at the same time. And if you are a mermaid, whether you are a professional mermaid or someone who just does this for fun, you know what? If you find something in the water, because you will find stuff in the water, I find stuff everywhere. If it's something that's not sharp or something that's not dangerous, you could always ask a child to throw it in the trash can for you because kids love it when mermaids ask for their help because obviously they're going to remember that a mermaid asked them to help keep the ocean or lake or river or whatever it is clean. And then they might carry that on throughout the rest of their life and help you out more by keeping your swimming area clean. So I've done this before. I've had some kids help me fish some cellophane out of the water. I guess I fished it out, but there were fish trying to eat it. So I picked it up out of the water. And since I couldn't climb up on the rocks, I tossed it up to the kids and asked them if they could throw it away from me and they were so excited to help out and I'm very grateful for them. Yes, go team. So that's tip number two. Let's move on to number three. All right, number three. Sequins and glitter and shiny beads are all very beautiful, without a doubt. But you know who else thinks they're beautiful? all the fish and the birds and the sea creatures and animal life that has a mouth <laughs> because 
I mean, what do you use to catch a fish? You use a lure of some sort, and lures are really typically quite shiny and beautiful, and they attract the fish. And if they see a sequence of the water, chances are they're going to try to gobble that up, and that's probably going to kill the fish, or the bird, or the dog, or the baby, or whatever it is that eats it. Ferrets included, because ferrets like to eat everything, and they die so much from eating things they shouldn't eat. So if you're going to wear a sequin tail, make sure the sequins are fastened really well. And honestly, I wouldn't recommend wearing sequin tails in open waters. Wear them to a pool if you'd like to, but it's just, if you really want to take care of your oceans and your lakes and your rivers and our natural bodies of water and the animals that dwell in them, I would advise against wearing sequins altogether. Because you see this video here, this was like a 30 minute swim in a tank. And that stuff you see floating around, those are little sequins. Imagine being a fish, that would just be like the perfect food to fit in your mouth. Like small mouth bass would be all over those. And I love bass and I don't want them to die. The same goes for if you plan on wearing a Finn Folk Mythic Tail. I've heard that those shed like crazy. So make sure they're secured really, really well. I don't think many fish would swallow those because they're quite big, but seagulls might, dogs might, babies, I don't know. Just, they shouldn't really probably be in our ocean because they don't really belong there. So just make sure those are really secured. And if you're worried about them shedding, maybe just wear them in a pool rather than in open water. I don't know, I've never owned one, but just something to consider. As far as glitter goes, you can still wear glitter, but please, if you want to be environmentally responsible and take care of our lakes, oceans, and rivers, and the beautiful beaches we have, consider wearing biodegradable glitter if you're going to put it on your face or anything like that, because it doesn't break down and that glitter will be there forever if you're wearing the plastic kind or if you're using the plastic kind and whatever you're doing if you're having a party or something at the beach with kids or whatever that glitter will be there forever so maybe reconsider glitter unless you're going to be using biodegradable i will link some biodegradable glitters down below so you can get those if you still want to use glitter as far as beads go, if you are going to be wearing a necklace or bracelet that has beads, please make sure that you fasten them on there really well by tying multiple knots in case something breaks and not all of your beads will be sliding off into the water. Just a couple of precautions you can take. Thank you. The fish and I appreciate you and probably the seabirds too. Whew. Wardrobe change because I'm freezing cold. It's like 30 degrees out. My fingers are so red. The fourth tip that I have for you is to be respectful of the plants and the animals that you come into contact with when you're swimming in a natural body of water. Now I know it can be very tempting to chase after really cool looking fish and sharks and whatever. Probably shouldn't chase sharks in general. You don't want to get hurt if you are charging after something. You don't want to hurt something if you are trying to touch it and you touch it and it like is really sensitive i don't know just keep your hands off of things okay don't touch fish don't touch coral obviously don't touch a shark just uh be respectful of the animals and creatures that you encounter be nice to them same with the plants just don't go yanking seaweed out of the water i mean sometimes when you swim through it it will break depends on the type of seaweed you're dealing with but just try to be respectful and not destructive when you're swimming if you want to, I guess, respect the creatures out there. So that's kind of a, a weird one, kind of fits into this, kind of doesn't. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments and let me know if you ever had any cool interactions with animals because I have before and I would actually love to share some of those stories in a video someday because Lake Michigan has some really awesome inhabitants and I love them. This fifth tip applies mostly to mermaids who have silicone mermaid tails, but before I get to it, look at this cool scenery behind me. I'm so satisfied with how that looks, it's so beautiful. So if you are a mermaid with a silicone mermaid tail, obviously you're going to have to use a lubricant of some sort to get into your tail. And if you're going to be swimming in a natural body of water, it's very important to use something as natural as possible or with as few ingredients as possible. My favorite things to use are Astroglide's liquid water-based lubricant. I have a whole video on how to get into a silicone mermaid tail and you can check that out in the description box. But Astroglide works really well. You don't have to use much of it. So there's very little of anything going into the water, which is nice. 
but if you're going to be using like a conditioner, try to look for something more natural. Love Beauty and Planet has great conditioners. I'll link them down in the description box below if you'd like to buy some. And they have very few ingredients and many of them are very natural things that you would find growing somewhere on this planet anyways. Try to stick with something natural. You probably shouldn't be using coconut oil because it's not good for your tail, but you could probably use water if you want to. I haven't actually tried that, but it would probably work. Just try to avoid things that have a lot of harsh chemicals. It's probably not good for your tail anyways, and it's definitely not good for the creatures that are swimming in the water. You reel in my microphone, and we'll get on to number six. Yeah, I'm part dragon. Number six is something that is very important no matter whether you are a mermaid swimming or if you're somebody who has a boat and you're taking your belt out in the water or if you're snorkeling or scuba diving or whatever it is that you like to do, you want to make sure that you are cleaning your equipment or your boat or whatever it is you're using. In this case, a mermaid tail, maybe a wig, maybe a shell bra, whatever. Make sure you clean your equipment or let it dry thoroughly before you go back into the water if you swim in natural bodies of water. And this is very important because it helps prevent the spread of aquatic hitchhikers like zebra mussels, quagga mussels, lamprey, all sorts of different things. You might not always notice if there's an aquatic hitchhiker on your tail or on your equipment because you can't always see them. For example, zebra mussel babies, you can't see them at all. They are really, really tiny. They're microscopic and they can live in a tiny little droplet of water. And if you have a tiny droplet of that water with that zebra mussel baby in your tail and you go to a lake that does not have zebra mussels, guess what? That lake is now going to have zebra mussels thanks to you. By not cleaning your equipment, you can introduce all sorts of invasive creatures to your natural body of water that will potentially kill off some of your favorite seed creatures that naturally live in your body of water. So make sure you clean your stuff really well. I have some tips on how to clean your mermaid tail down in the description box. I'll link those there. How to bathe it, how to rinse it, how to dry it, all that good stuff. I'm not going to move for number seven because, well, I'm cold. That would be just in general when you're at home and doing your thing. Ha, there's a boat. Boat. They're coming in behind us. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hello, boat. Uh, when you're at home, do your best to recycle. Try not to buy things that are just like teeming with plastic and just be more conscious of the things you buy. If you're throwing a bunch of stuff away that could be recycled, just little tiny things like that can make all of the difference. <laughs> Say hi to our boaters. <laughs> so that's my seventh tip for you is just maybe recycle. Remember, not everybody has to be perfect with recycling and doing everything right all the time, but if everybody's doing their part to make a difference here and there, it does add up and it does help benefit our earth and ultimately our lakes. Now, I have a bonus tip for you, and I'm not moving for this one either because I'm still freezing cold. Surprise. Eighth tip is to share this video with somebody who you think could benefit from it. Because the more we share things like this, information on how to take care of our lakes, take care of our oceans, take care of our planet, the more people that will actually maybe help because not everybody thinks of this kind of stuff, believe it or not. I think as merfolk with us being in the water all the time, surrounded by the natural beauty of things, we're more conscious of the stuff that goes on in our lakes and at our beaches. And we just see more of the trash. We see more of the pollution. We see more of the aquatic hitchhikers or we feel them with our fingertips. And uh, I don't think other people are always quite as aware, especially people who live in the cities and don't get to see all this beautiful stuff all of the time. So feel free to share this video with others. And two, if you would like to help encourage others to be more environmentally responsible and to take care of our planet better, just remember sometimes gentle is the best way. Nobody likes to be forced into anything, but uh, people are often very receptive to kind, kind redirection, if that's what you want to call it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and I hope you will do your part to help keep our world a beautiful and clean place. If you have any other tips to leave, please put them down in the comments below and I'll try to create a pinned comment including all those tips and I'll be sure to give yours a big heart. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next Friday.
Don't forget to subscribe.